Part 1. The Fundamentals Chapter 1. Your Mindset and How It Affects How People View You Have you ever met someone who seemed nice and attractive, but within five minutes of talking to him or her, they were so negative and crude that they actually looked ugly to you? I remember once I met a model that I had actually seen in several men's magazines. She was blonde, tall, and every curve was in the exact right place. This woman was the idea of what I thought a woman should be physically. In short, she was gorgeous. Then she opened her mouth. Every word that spewed out was full of sarcasm and hatred. She had opinions on everything, and usually it was how much she despised it. She even let out a few choice comments about people that could be viewed as nothing less than prejudice. Within moments, I no longer saw the beautiful model, but instead a truly foul, undesirable human being. That's what happens when someone sees a negative mindset in a person. So you need to make sure you are in a place where you put off positive vibes that women will respond to. This is your mindset. Now, it doesn't mean you have to suddenly become Mr. Cheerful Optimist and think the world's a beautiful, flower-filled place. No. It just means that you're being positive, confident, and moving forward as a man. Dangerous Mindsets There are a number of pitfall mindsets that people can fall into that will destroy not just their social and interpersonal lives, but can take them down in regards to their career and even their family. Even more so, women pick up on these mindsets and are not going to be attracted to you or even interested in seeing you if you did have an initial connection. The Victim This mindset is when people believe that they are the target of the actions of other people. They tend to feel powerless and can fall into helplessness. Women see this as weak and having a lack of control over your life. No woman is going to respond to you if they feel like you are spiraling downwards or blame others for what you should be handling. Giving up your power and believing others caused your troubles is weak and very unsexy. The Perfectionist While everyone strains for being the best they can, a person with a perfect mindset isn't satisfied unless they are the best and can set exceptionally high standards for themselves. They begin to become scared that they won't accomplish their goals, and therefore be judged a failure. Many times, it is one extreme or the other, with no in-between. Women can find a man with this mindset stressful. They may think that they have to live up to your standards or be uncomfortable with your outlook. Women want to be with someone who accepts them and doesn't judge them. The hit the wall. This is the person who is burned out, either due to work, life, or relationships. They have an attitude of giving up, because their energy and emotional strength have been used up. This is seen in their work and relationships, as they don't have the will or energy to put in the work needed. This mindset can easily lead to negativity and a sense of helplessness, and no one wants to be around that. The Self-Entitled Chapter 2. Self-Accountability and Self-Worth Before you can really connect with another person, you have to be in touch with yourself. You have to have control over your emotions and really value who you are as a person. If you don't, you're not only going to not attract the right woman, but you won't be able to keep her. In some cases, missing out on your own confidence is going to lead you to the wrong kind of woman. While you're out there looking for the right woman, you could inadvertently attract a toxic woman, the kind of woman who will prey on men who aren't all that confident or who will help them create the drama which they thrive on. This definitely isn't what you are looking for here. You don't have to have it all together, but she needs to know that you have the tools and a plan to move your life forward before she's going to be interested in being a part of it.
how you destroy your own self-worth. Sometimes as humans, we have a horrible habit of self-destruction. It might be because we don't believe we should succeed or possibly we're dealing with mental programming of low self-esteem going back to childhood. There are many ways that we do this to ourselves, and in order to be successful with the opposite sex, you need to purge these actions from your life. You use alcohol as a social crutch. Look, I'm not passing judgment. I enjoy drink as much as the next guy. But if you don't feel like you can be social without having a few, then something is not right. This includes marijuana, too. We all grew up with the idea of liquid courage, that if we have a couple of drinks, it will help with nerves and give us the power to be more sociable. In college, a lot of people just take it as the way socialization works. That's not help. That's dependency. You need to take a serious look at what causes your anxieties and stop using alcohol to numb them. If it's deep-seated enough, you might even want to consider counseling. There's nothing wrong with seeking help for drinking dependency. It doesn't mean you're an alcoholic. It simply means that you have created some bad habits and you need to fix them before it's too late. Keeping it inside As men, we're often taught that we should just stuff our feelings down inside and push on. The problem is that this can be damaging to your mental health. Now, I'm not saying you need to cry when you see weepy commercials, but you shouldn't keep stuff bottled up inside. Suffering a loss or some sort of emotional turmoil can be hard, and keeping it inside gives your brain a horrible place to play it over and it will consume you. It's okay to talk things out. Talk to your best friends. If they don't want to hear it, it might be time for new friends or even visiting a therapist. Again, it's manlier to control your problems than let them control you. Dwelling on Inner Negative Messages We all have internal messages in our brains that we play over and over. For a lot of guys, they are positive, motivational, or thoughts that push them forward. If you played sports, it's probably pretty likely your coach talked to you about visualization and positive outlook and how it can influence your ability on the field or the court. Some men are continually listening to an internal message that tells them they're not good enough or that they are always going to fail. Chapter 3. The Alpha Male. Truths and Myths. That's what women say they want. The Alpha Male. The confident, assertive man who always gets his way. They claim that it's genetic and primal that they want to be a pack leader. Of course, there are those women who find the alpha male a big turnoff. They'd rather have the considerate man, the thoughtful man, the sensitive man. But still, there seems to be a decent number of women who are interested in the alpha male personality type. But what if I told you there is no such thing as the alpha male, at least not the way people think? The Alpha Male Myth The term alpha wolf isn't real. It's based on the research of a scientist named L. David Meck, who wrote the book The Wolf in the 1970s, based on his wolf observations at a wildlife preserve. Meck came up with the concept that there was one alpha wolf that was the dominant leader of all the other wolves. The book was a huge hit and coined the phrase alpha wolf, which people began to apply to people. Their reasoning was that people must behave like wolves, even though we have no other connections to them. After the book was released, Mech went back and studied wolves again, but this time in the wild. He realized that he had been incorrect in his findings. Wolves don't have a dominant hierarchy, the way he had assumed. He realized. He tried to make his findings public, but by then it was too late. The idea of the alpha male had taken hold. That doesn't mean anything, right? The more aggressive, athletic, assertive guy is an alpha, and he's going to always get what he wants in every situation, right? Not always. Imagine you are the star college quarterback. You're the most popular guy on campus. You're smart, and you get good grades. 
Everything is great for you. You are the top dog. Now, drop yourself in with the characters of the television show The Big Bang Theory. Suddenly, you're at the bottom of the heap. You are in their world. You're definitely not the smartest and definitely not in charge. In fact, you might not even be able to keep up with the conversation. If you're the alpha on the football field, you're definitely not trying to debate with that group. They are the alpha, and you are now answering to them. Being the alpha is situational, and it's really just a name for aggressive guys. It is not the be-all and end-all way of being. It is not something to aspire to. Be yourself. Be confident in who you are, and you'll fall where you will. Now, that being said, the lone wolf. This is what I think a lot of women mistake for the alpha male. They like the individual man who is responsible for his own life and circumstances. Being responsible when it comes to money, life, and your actions trigger something deep inside a woman. Remember that flirting and all of this is based on primal desires. Deep down, she wants someone who knows how to get stuff done. With a bit of mystery, the interest deepens. The lone wolf doesn't care about being a leader or having others bend to his will. He's merely concerned with his own fulfillment and needs. His self-worth is high, but he realizes it doesn't matter what people think of him. It's not all about the women. The lone wolf has a goal, and he's not going to let a relationship stand in the way. It could be work. It could be a goal to sail around the world to a woman. Chapter 4. What Women Want I've always heard that women are really complicated to figure out. I have to disagree. I think you need to start with the fact that every woman is different, and you need to embrace that. But I've learned in my experiences with them what they want when talking to men. The top ten qualities women say they look for in a man. 1. Confidence. 2. Sense of humor. 3. Reliability and honesty. 4. Not a pushover. 5. Intelligence. 6. Resourcefulness. 7. Passion. 8. Ability to communicate. 9. A protector. 10. Physicality or attractiveness and sex appeal. So let's break these down. Confidence. It just keeps coming back to this, doesn't it? Women love confidence. It's sexy and pulls them in. Remember, there is a difference between confidence and cockiness. Confidence is often unspoken, more of a vibe than the actual words. It's the way you stand and the way you speak, and women can't get enough of it. Sense of humor. Having a sense of humor isn't just about telling a joke, but also about not taking yourself too seriously. If you tease her, she's probably going to tease you back. In fact, you should hope she does, because that's a sign she's flirting back and interested. So don't get easily offended. It's one thing to let a joke slide off you. But if you actually got insulted by a legitimate insult, make sure you don't get angry and just let it go although it might be time to walk away. Remember your self-worth. You should never stand somewhere and allow someone to insult you. Many times, the woman won't even realize that she said something that offended you. Just like men, women will sometimes jest without meaning any harm. When you point it out to them, they'll apologize and back off. Often, this shows that you're willing to stand up for yourself without having to fly off the rails, and she'll give you more respect. If the woman tries to brush off your concerns or acts indignant for being called out on it, then you need to walk away. Reliability and Honesty Women don't like liars. It doesn't matter if you lied to them about cheating, what you do for a living, or that you're wearing clean socks. They want to know that you are telling them the truth. They also want to feel that you're reliable. From the first time they meet you through dating and even into marriage, they want to know that you'll be there for them 
and do what they ask and that you promise. A classic example of this is the honeydew list. When you are in a relationship, there will be things that she asks you to do, from errands to household things, and a lot of times couples call it the honeydew or honey-do list. Some boyfriends and husbands don't take this list seriously, but it's a way to show that you are dependable. Make sure that you're constantly checking things off and getting them done. Believe me, she notices. Not a pushover. You don't have to be over-demanding by any means, but you need to stand up for yourself. Don't let people, or her, walk all over you. While you want to do things for her, you aren't at her beck and call. You have a life and goals of your own. Intelligence. Part 2. In the Field. Chapter 5. Those First Few Words. You see her across the room. She's beautiful and exactly your type. You have the courage. You know what you're going to talk about. So you start across the floor. Wait. Hold on a second. Before you walk over, are you ready? How you present yourself. In How to Attract Women, I extensively go into how to develop your own style, dress, and take care of your appearance. We also covered hygiene in How to Flirt with Women. But if not, make sure to check it out. They will help you immensely. So before you head out the door, ready to meet someone new, I offer a rundown of this quick checklist. Hair looks good? How's the breath? Are the clothes straight? Fly isn't open? Know what you're going to say? How's your mindset? Is it positive and solid? Seriously, fly's not open, right? Still not ready? Why? Fear. It's possible that you want to walk over and feel ready, but are still afraid. So, what if you're afraid to go speak to a woman? Well, first of all, it's normal. You're excited. You see a hot girl. Your heart's pumping a bit. Here's the short answer. Conquer it. That's what you have to do. Whether you have to just take a deep breath and take the plunge, or mentally prepare yourself, you have to find a way to get over it. What are the most common fears you might be experiencing? What if she says no? Rejection sucks. It does. It doesn't matter if it's from a girl, a job, or anywhere. We don't like to feel rejected. But what if she does? It's a few minutes out of your life. It's nothing personal. It's not that you're a bad person or that she thinks you are inferior in some way. It's just not right. There's nothing wrong with that. If you did get rejected, think of it as practice. You tried some good conversation. Some of it might have worked. Other things might have fallen flat. That's how human beings learn from our failures. As we discussed earlier, part of being a fulfilled man is learning from things that went wrong. Now the next time, maybe even in a few more minutes, you talk to a woman, you have a little more experience under your belt and knowledge of how to approach the situation. What if she has a boyfriend or is a lesbian? While they are both kinds of rejection, finding out that the woman has a partner and learning that she is a lesbian can cause their own special forms of embarrassment. Like with all rejection, don't take it personally. It really doesn't say anything about you. Her having a boyfriend does not mean that it's your fault for not getting there sooner, and her being a lesbian does not reflect on your masculinity at all. If you want to hang around and talk with her just to be her friend, great, do it. Female friends are awesome. But if you're doing it with the thought that you might be able to change her mind about anything, get that out of your head right now. You won't. And if you come in a friendship with a woman with that mindset, she will find out, and it will not end well for you. The important thing is that you don't act like a jerk. If you pester her after she says she has a boyfriend, or you act homophobic after you find out that she's a lesbian, it will bite you in the butt. Women talk to each other, and your name will spread around. Be nice and just leave things... Chapter 6. 
connecting and chemistry. It doesn't matter how much effort you put into talking with a woman. If you don't have some sort of connection or chemistry, it's not going to move forward. As I've said before, sometimes it's instant before you even utter a word, but that's not always going to happen. However, you can do things to make the attraction and connection stronger from the first moment she sees you. Making an Instant Connection There are several ways you can make sure you connect with someone. It's about making them feel comfortable with you, as if you have a history. In order to do that, make sure you incorporate these points early in your conversation. Listen When people know they're being heard, they're more likely to feel connected to you. It's universal. Everybody wants to feel important. So when you acknowledge that you are listening and comprehending what she's saying, that bonds her to you, helping create a quick and strong connection. Make a strong first impression. When you first speak to her, make sure you come across as well as possible. Stand up straight, speak clearly, and, of course, smile. The more confident you are, the more of an impression you will make. Don't stay in the shallow end. Always remember that this woman probably gets hit on a dozen times a day, and most of the men who do it have no idea what they are doing. You need to differentiate yourself, which is easy to do, because you do know what you're doing. Don't be superficial. Don't fall into small talk or cheesy lines. Be real. Go right into the interesting conversation and she's going to be impressed and connected. Be intelligently inquisitive. Ask brief, good questions that she can answer so she can share information about herself. Make sure to offer smart follow-up questions that continue to push the conversation forward. Make sure you don't just turn the conversation around to you. Too many men tend to take the small amount of information they just got and relate it to their own experiences. This will alienate her incredibly quickly. Learn from her. If she tells you something you didn't know about a topic, acknowledge it, tell her that you didn't know that, and that you learned something. Thank her. This will cause a connection. Call her by name. You got her name, right? By using her name naturally. It creates a connection. Don't overuse it, though. That can come across a bit creepy. Just use it when it's natural in the conversation. Make your comments genuine. Don't fill the conversation with generic statements and rehearsed comments. Be genuine about what you talk about and your interests. She's going to be able to tell, unless you are an incredibly good actor. If you aren't genuine and it works out, it will come back to haunt you. Don't play the one-up game. I dated a woman once who, when I would tell her about something bad that had happened, would always immediately tell me back something else in her life that was just that bad or worse. I finally asked her about it, not long before we stopped dating, and told her that I felt as if she wasn't listening to me. She said she absolutely was. It was her way of sharing the bad and commiserating with her. Chapter 7. Having a Conversation Having a conversation isn't difficult. We have them with dozens of people as we move through every day. But having a conversation with a woman you're interested in is going to be something different. Topics Topics are going to depend on two things, you and her. You need to learn what topics she's passionate about and how deeply she's interested into delving into them. Personally, I'm a big news junkie. I read the news all day long and will often follow stories as they develop. I like to be on top of everything. Now, some women I talk with love to keep up on the news as well, while others barely know where to find Washington, D.C. on a map. But that's fine. That just means I gauge the conversation. Sometimes I'll be ready for a heavy political discussion with a woman, while other times 
It's just a simple current event headline that she found interesting. But not because she wanted to know, it's because I knew it, and she was impressed by my knowledge. Or I'll steer to something else altogether. Usually, there are certain topics that are safe to pursue until you learn a bit more about the woman. Pets She doesn't have to have pets of her own, because odds are she had at least one pet growing up that was her favorite. If you both share having pets currently, it opens up the whole world of topics, especially if they are the same, such as you both have dogs. But if one of you is a cat person, and one of you is a dog person, fret not, it's actually a great opportunity to have a fun debate about which is better. While you should never give in that her way is better, don't be mean or cruel, just be playful and tease her a bit, but the fact is that you both love animals, so nobody is wrong. Travel Most people enjoy traveling, or at least the destination once you arrive. She may not have been around the world, or maybe she has, but most likely she wants to travel more, just like most people. Ask about where she has been and where she wants to go. What is her favorite place she's ever been? Or what is the one place that she hasn't been but wants to? Be prepared. She's going to ask you the same question, so your answer better be something better than spring break in Florida. Movies and television It's tough to find someone who doesn't have a favorite movie or television show, so it's a pretty safe topic. But don't just throw out the question, seen any good movies lately? Food. Everyone has a favorite food, even if it's just a burger and fries. We all like to eat. Talk about what types of cuisine she likes. Does she have a favorite restaurant? Is there a food she's always wanted to try but hasn't yet? Be specific. No matter which subject you go with, remember to be specific. Ask her what the last movie she enjoyed was, or if there's a show she's currently binging. Move away from generics to more interesting conversations about deeper meanings in film, or how they affected both of you. Just saying something looked cool because they had great special effects isn't going to be enough. How to talk to her What kinds of questions should you ask? As you pose questions to her, you want to sound like you just thought of them. Also, when you ask questions, you don't want them to be ones that have to be thought out. Some people don't have a favorite movie or band, and you're going to have to think, and it gets distracting. Ask ones most people can answer quickly. This could include... Chapter 8. How to Steer a Conversation It's really not that difficult to move a conversation to certain topics. We do it all the time. How often have you made small talk with someone at a bank or during a meeting before you got down to business? It's the same principle with steering a conversation, but you want to make sure that the person whom you are talking with is going to be open to the new topic. Part of this is done through observation and listening, and the rest is all in the presentation. While it's obviously fun and sexy to talk about sex with a new woman, it's also a great way to learn if you do end up sleeping together. You might get a hint at her likes and dislikes and can implement them when the time is right. Prime the pump. Start using words that set the foundation for talking about sex. Telling a woman she's sexy is more about a feeling than how she looks. You can tell her she's sexy and look at her in a way that she knows you're talking about the way she looks. She might take it as a compliment, but you can make it mean much more. Tie it to something deeper. Her laugh, her sense of humor, the way she talks. This makes it much deeper and less superficial. Talk about love and passion, not about sex. Women respond to mood and emotion, while men usually respond to visual cues. So if you tell her how hot you thought a love scene in a movie was, she's probably not going to feel the same vibe. However, if you told her you thought it was sensual and talked about the characters, she's going to be drawn in and be more open to discussing things of a sexual nature. 
You don't want to come across as some horny teenager who saw a boob on the big screen. She wants a man, not a boy. Innuendo Innuendo is simply implying another message to a word that you say. When you make it a sexual innuendo, it's a lot more fun. Try words like hard, come, wet, or moist. Phrases like slipped it inside, things work better when they're wet, or it's getting hard, work well. You can also try to find ways to make a play on her employment. If she's a nurse, you could slip in a naughty nurse comment. Or maybe she's a school teacher, and you could say something about her giving out discipline. I had a friend. Bring up a topic about someone else. Tell her you have a female friend who had a sexual issue or story, and tell her. Make sure to keep it simple so she doesn't ask details and suddenly you're stumped. The fun of this is that you have just opened up a sexual conversation, but because it's someone else, she's going to feel more comfortable to speak freely. Also, you are asking her opinion, so you're adding to your deepening connection. What if the conversation is stalling? You might run into resistance. She might not feel comfortable about sex, and after trying every approach, she's just not into the conversation. It happens. Some people keep their sexuality very closed. It doesn't mean that she's not interested in sex. It's even possible she's such a sexual person that she has to keep it under locks. If it's your first conversation and you can't steer it, that's okay. If it's your third date, maybe you should reconsider. This could be a sign that she isn't really that interested in you. Not everyone is a sexual person. There are some... Chapter 9. How to get past the small talk and get her phone number. You've been talking a few minutes and she seems like she's into you. But will she give you her phone number? Will she go out with you? First of all, you need to be in the mindset that, of course she will. She's given you no reason to think she wouldn't, so keep that positivity. You have to believe that every woman you are interested in will give you her number. It's not arrogance. It's just a feeling of positivity and abundance. You're an intelligent, good-looking, and interesting guy, so there's no reason she would not want to get to know you. If you operate on this level, you will radiate confidence. So, how do you move the conversation to a point where you can get her number? Small talk to real conversation. The biggest trick to moving from small talk and casual conversation to something more meaningful is to validate her interests and pull them into a deeper conversation. All this means is to find the small things in what they are saying or doing that can be seen as important by both of you. Let's try a hypothetical situation. You're at a coffee shop and you notice a beautiful woman waiting for her coffee right next to you. You give her a smile, she smiles back, and you have some good eye contact. She comments on your shirt color and you thank her. Right as your coffee comes, you notice she has a nice bracelet that is very unique. You comment that it's really cool. She smiles, thanks you, and says she got it when she was traveling in Asia. You say, that sounds cool, and she smiles, says goodbye, and leaves. What happened? You had the perfect opportunity to turn casual small talk into a much deeper conversation. She gave you the perfect opening when she said she got her bracelet in Asia. That's the opportunity to take a bit of small talk information and turn it into a conversation that is meaningful. Travel is a perfect opportunity. When people take a trip, especially to another country or part of the world, there's going to be an emotional connection. They are going to be happy to share. If you had said something like, Asia? I've never been there. What was that trip like? you would have opened up the door for a longer and more real conversation. Look for those nuggets in small talk that can open women up. Asking for the digits Before you ask, check yourself with a couple of things. Check for that ring on her left hand. Make sure you didn't miss it. You don't want to realize you're hitting on a married woman. 
All good. Did she say she's seeing someone? Some guys think that if she's got a boyfriend, she's still up for some fun. She's not married. I think this is disrespectful and makes you less of a man. If you had a girlfriend and some guy tried to make a move, how would you react? It's one thing for her to say she has one, but if you know, back off. Treat her the same way you would want your own girlfriend treated. Assume it's going to happen. Be confident that you two are going to go out and have fun. Don't say, is it okay if I ask you out? You don't need permission to ask. Just ask. Be specific. Say, would you have dinner with me? Or maybe let's have dinner. Assume that she's just had a great conversation, and of course, she's going to want to see more of you. Come up with a day as soon as you can. Snap a picture. If you're somewhere... Chapter 10. How to tell a story, joke, or just have a conversation. Years ago, I did a few open mic nights at a local comedy club because I wanted to get over any fears I had of speaking in front of crowds. I worked up a few minutes and got a few laughs. It definitely wasn't for me, but it was a great experience. I got to see a lot of comedians those nights and learned a lot from just watching. Not everybody is a great joke teller. Some people are just natural storytellers, but if that's not you, I have you covered. To start, always know your audience. If you just walked up to her and she has a cross around her neck, you might not tell her a joke about a naughty priest. Always tell jokes that are appropriate to who is around. If you're going to tell a dirty joke at a wedding, make sure the six-year-old flower girl isn't standing nearby listening. Keep it short and witty. Make sure it's pertinent to the situation. It comes off really weird to tell a joke about cows after they just told you the story of a car accident as a child. Get it right. You don't want to screw up a punchline or reveal. Try starting off the joke as if it's something that really happened to you. Then the punchline hits. For example, I was in the hospital for six months. Then they kicked me out because I thought it was a hotel. Don't guffaw at your own joke. Just offer a wry smile that you know it's funny. Types of humor. Everybody's sense of humor is a little different, including women. Some women like dry and witty. Others like stupid jokes. Most are fans of a little off-color and innuendo humor. So if you can figure out what type of a sense of humor they have really quickly, you're going to be far more successful at making her laugh. It's also important that you know when you are bringing it up. If you go on and on about how funny the Three Stooges are, and she hates them, that's going to be a strike against your instant connection. Dry and Witty the majority of women loves dry humor, but being able to deliver a line without a smile is a big thing. Women definitely find it sexy. It's about the control you have and the bit of aloofness when the line is delivered. Being able to deliver a dry joke about someone while they're standing there and they don't know, it is the ultimate prize for dry humor. It's almost guaranteed if a woman hears it, they will come up to you and want to mention it. Poking fun at life. This is when you look for the absurd in the world, laughing at small little things that pop up in life. It's usually pretty lighthearted and a bit of a positive approach to life. Sort of the optimistic reverse of sarcasm. Dark of gallows humor. Dark humor can be a bit... dark. Usually... It's jokes about death, dismemberment, or just not the natural way society looks at things. It can be fun, and to throw out a dark joke and maybe even comment afterward, eh, a little too dark, can be fun. Slapstick Broad humor, often with physical. Women might like this, but usually not from their men. I knew a guy once who was really good at pratfalls. He could walk into walls, fall, 
and make it look like he hurt himself. He used to try to do it to impress girls. Chapter 11, what you can learn from sources other than her. This is where you get to play a bit of the Sherlock Holmes game. Sure, you've been listening to her and finding things out, but there are other ways to learn. Her appearance. Women take a great deal of pride in their appearance and their own personal style. So first of all, a reminder to compliment them on the style, not just the appearance. Her purse. Is it high fashion? Is it more of a backpack? Does it have a big designer label or trademark? The type of purse she has says a lot about her. High style usually means high maintenance and possibly a preoccupation with money and trend. A backpack purse usually means a casual girl who's more into the guy. Her clothes and shoes. It depends on where you are, but the fashion she is wearing will tell you a lot. Is she dressed to impress, or is more about her own style and comfort? If she's wearing tighter clothing, it's usually a sign of high self-esteem and low body issues, which means she's fun and knows what she wants. Probably fewer games. Often a woman, like a man, who wears baggy clothes has body issues. It doesn't mean they aren't great women. Just be careful about certain subjects when you're talking until you get to know her a bit better. Check her shoes. Do they look stylish? If so, she could be a fashionista. Of course, these are just guides. There are a lot of women who may be overcompensating, and they might wear tight clothes despite the low self-esteem. Similarly, many women wear baggy clothes because they care more about comfort than appearance rather than from any body issues. Her nails. Does she have a manicure? Are they long? Are they crazy colors? Comment and ask about them. If they are really crazy and colorful, it usually means they have a creative side. Ask her if she's artistic. You might have just found the perfect opening. Her jewelry. Is it simple or ornate? Simple and classy, like pearls, can tell you that she's got a refined sense of style. So cater your approach accordingly. Is she more arts and crafts with her jewelry? She's probably a bit more creative with a broader sense of humor. Make sure to compliment her on her jewelry. Make sure it's unique and deserves the compliment, though. How she talks. You can learn a lot about someone by what they talk about, but have you considered how they say it? Listening to how someone talks is a very helpful way to learn about them beyond what they say. It's the same for the woman you're talking with. Does she speak formally or casually, loudly or quietly? Is her vocabulary complex or simple? Does she swear, and if so, how much? All of these can speak volumes for her personality, upbringing, education level, and so on. You could even get a hint as to where she's from based on her accent, but don't rely too heavily on these assumptions. It's very easy to mix up similar accents. Trust me, you don't want to ask a woman what part of England she's from and have it turn out that she's Australian. It's not just her voice and vocabulary that you should pay attention to. Watch her body language, too. More importantly, watch her hands. People will talk with their hands for a lot of reasons. They're nervous, they're excited, they're passionate about the subject. They're passionate about the person whom they're... Chapter 12. Online and Texting Conversations so much of our life takes place through texts, apps, and online. We pay our bills, shop, and find love. The rules of having online conversations are a bit different than person to person. Sometimes you can push subjects into a sexier territory, while other times you have to be careful that what you wrote isn't taken out of context. If you can learn how to maneuver through the digital world, you have the opportunity to have amazing conversations full of flirting and fun that will lead to dates and more. Texting Texting is a huge part of how we communicate, but too easily misunderstandings can arise. 
Many of these can be avoided by following a few do's and don'ts. Texting do's. Always double check what you write before sending. It's just nice to check grammar and send something readable, but you also don't want to accidentally send her a message whose meaning was changed because you use the word sex instead of six. If you haven't texted them before, make sure you mention who it is in the first message. Mention your texting habits casually. Let her know if you're always on your phone or tend to leave it aside while you're doing things. That way, she'll know how you tend to text. Try to learn her style as well. Save the big conversations for in-person. Plant some seeds with some flirting and comments, but if you have big questions or want to delve into a subject, wait until you're face-to-face. -face. It's okay to send a funny photo or selfie, but don't hit them with a dozen all at once. Also, make sure you're clothed in any selfie you send. Move the conversation forward. Don't dwell on topics or keep going back to the same line or joke. Do use innuendo. Make sure it is clever and never crude. Texting don'ts. Don't bombard her with texts without waiting for a response. Don't spread your message out over numerous texts. Be concise. Don't include the person in mass texts. It's annoying to most people, let alone someone you're trying to get to know. Everyone in the mass text is going to see what the reader sends. Flirting, and anything to do with sex, can be seen by many, and this can cause a lot of embarrassment. Don't go crazy with emojis. Also, make sure you know what that slang means before you use it. Don't drag a text conversation out if you aren't understanding each other. Sometimes you just need to call someone to make things clear. Don't play the waiting game. If you got a text from her, answer her back when you know what to say and have a safe opportunity, as in, don't text and drive. Don't get sarcastic or too dry with your humor. This can be easily lost in texts and should be saved for in-person meetings. Don't text her in the middle of the night. Some people don't turn their phones off because they need to be accessible. Texting her in the middle of the night could get you into some hot water. Be careful texting a woman whose number you got through a mutual friend. Women often consider this a rather cowardly move, as they wonder why you didn't have the guts to come up to them and talk to them in person. It might even be construed as creepy and stalkerish. Chapter 13 how to Talk to Women in Other Countries Traveling is no reason to suddenly stop talking to women. In fact, meeting and talking with women in other countries can be an amazing experience. Even aside from potential romance, it's a way to learn about the world, other cultures, and practice your conversational skills. Living Overseas As I've said before, I've had the pleasure of traveling around the world. I've also lived while I've worked in certain countries for a few months at a time. If you get the opportunity, I would highly recommend it. If you're just looking to live overseas for a few months or maybe a year, becoming an ESL teacher is a great option. In some countries, it pays really well, and you're provided with travel and accommodations, and you still have a lot of time to socialize with the locals. If you're looking for something more adventurous, Cargo ships and container vessels often look for crews in exchange for a salary, room, and board. You can cross the ocean in about two and a half weeks and have enough to have some fun or go on to the next port. How to Approach Women Abroad This is going to be different from country to country. In How to Flirt with Women, I discussed some of the differences in cultures and body languages in other countries. Every place is going to be different. The easiest way is simply walking up with a smile and saying hello. As long as you are polite and unassuming, you are most likely going to have a pleasant experience. Note, make sure you understand how things work in the country you visit. There are some where it is considered improper for women to be approached by or for them to talk 
to strange men. Hostels. Depending on where you are staying and what your budget and lifestyle are, you might want to consider hostels. They are an especially prudent option in Southeast Asian countries like Thailand, where bedpacking, a technique often used by Western tourists without enough money to fund their trips, is discouraged and often illegal. You'll meet people from around the world right where you are staying, and many of them will be able to help you make social connections in the city or be looking to make friends and go out. There are often lots of bars and clubs near hostels where you can meet your fellow travelers and the locals. However, the living quarters at the hostel might not be ideal if the opportunity comes to bring a girl home with you. Language Barrier one thing that you have going for you is that English is one of the most widely spoken languages on the planet. So this means the odds are that any woman you want to talk to will know at least a few words of English. In most countries, English is very prevalent, especially with younger people. In many Asian and European countries, they speak multiple languages, including English. They'll also often want to practice with a native-born English speaker, so that means they may want to talk to you. Speak slowly and clearly so she can understand you, but at a speed that is comfortable and confident. Slang doesn't always translate, even when they speak English. By using too much of it, you're risking alienating her or her becoming frustrated. Also, remember slang can mean different things in different countries. Dialogue and phrase books are great as well as apps for your smartphone that help translate. Also, make sure to double-check any translations that you do online, because these are not always accurate and can lead to some embarrassing mistranslations. I always like to make sure... I Please be sure to visit Amazon.com or Audible.com for more information on this book and the author. This has been How to Talk to Women. Get her to like you and want you with effortless, fun conversation and never run out of anything to say. How to Approach Women, Dating Advice for Men, written by Ray Asher, narrated by Russell Newton. Copyright 2020 by Ray Asher. Production Copyright by Ray Asher.